Create a new game object in the hierarchy window. Call it anything you want. Select the new game object and in the inspector window, add a new component to it of type line render. In your line render component, insert two positions for the line to be drawn between them. Now you can see your line. Adjust the material, thickness, color, and any other property of the line as desired. Add a new script. Name it whatever you want. Create a public line render variable called circle render. Save the script and back in the editor, drag and drop your line render component to the script's circle render variable. Write a method called draw circle. This method will be fed two variables, an integer called steps and a float called radius. Steps will dictate how many straight lines our circle will be made up of. Radius will dictate how big the circle is. Integer means the value is a positive or negative whole number. Float means it's a value with decimals and not big or precise enough to require the variable to be of type double instead. In your draw circle method, you can change your circle renderer's step size by changing its parameter, position count, to match the amount of desired steps. Now set up a loop that will go through every step. So, for every current step starting at zero while smaller than the total number of steps, increase the current step by one. Inside this loop, we will calculate the current position for every given step. To do this, first, Calculate the circumference progress of the given step. To do this, divide the current step over the total number of steps. This will give us a float value between 0 and 1, which represents where the step is relative to its starting point around the circle. 0 and 1 happen to be the same position since you've come full circle. To convert this circumference progress into two dimensions, x and y, we will use the magic of sine, cosine, and radians. To get the current radian, we will multiply the circumference progress by 2 times pi, or tau. This will turn it into a number between 0 and approximately 6.28, the value of tau. This tau number, which is 2 times pi, represents the length of the circumference in terms of its radius. So a circle's circumference is 6.28 times as long as the radius when stretched in a straight line. This also means that a circle will travel 6.28 times its radius when going full circle. This also happens to be pi times its diameter, since diameter is twice the radius and tau is twice pi. To translate the current radian to the x dimension, calculate the cosine of the current radian, which will give you a value between minus one and one, minus one being the furthest left it goes, one being the furthest right it goes, and zero its center in the x axis. To translate the current radian to the y dimension, calculate the sine of the current radian, which will give you a value between minus one and one, minus one being the furthest down it goes, one being the furthest up it goes, and zero its center. Now that you have these values of x and y scaled from minus one to one, multiply them by the radius to scale it to the size of the circle. It's time to tell our line renderer what the current step and current position are. Create a vector3 variable called current position. This variable will store the x and y values we've calculated for this step. And for its third variable, we will enter 0 since it's a two dimensional view and its z dimension shouldn't affect how the line looks. Now that we know both our current step and our current position in vector3 format, set the position by calling the line renderer's setPosition method, which assigns the current step to be in the current position. To actually draw the circle, call it in your start method with the steps and radius desired, and it will be drawn as soon as you press play. Around 100 steps should be fine for now. Save the script and press play in your Unity editor to watch your circle get drawn.